Hello Internet, Tully Essen here, and today we are talking healing in World of Warcraft Battle for Azeroth. Because as the brand new expansion approaches and all the cool kids are getting excited about their Fury Warriors spinning and winning, all their Warlock one-shotting raid bosses, the even cooler kids like us know that when it comes to the real dirty work of keeping those mages alive when they simply can't move out of the fire though, because they're in the middle of their DPS window though, well then it is the healer that is doing the reactive and largely thankless heavy lifting in this team. In fact, healers are like the goalkeepers of your raid Group. No one will notice when you do your job well, but take your eye off the ball for a second and you know, you just know that it's somehow going to be your fault that the tank didn't use a personal, because seriously, would it kill you to self-mitigate like once in your entire life? Anyway, the question is, which classes has the best tools to keep you and your raid or Mythic Plus group on their feet when it matters the most? Well, the build's now all essentially in place and only the finer numbers tuning to go, we are ready to take a look at Battle for Azeroth's healing roster, see what's changed, which healer is best in which situation and what you're going to want to be playing throughout the course of the next expansion. So join us as we rate the healers of World of Warcraft Battle for Azeroth, okay? Go, 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 go. Those of you who follow this channel on the regular will know that I was absolutely in love with Discipline Priest in Legion. Not only do I think it's the most fun healing spec on the Broken Isles, but probably the most fun healing spec I've played in any MMO ever. I tried to spend time practicing every healing class throughout an expansion, but Discipline's unique gameplay style of applying atonement to friendly targets and then healing them through the DPS that you throw out was such stupid, ridiculous fun that everything else just seemed boring and unengaging by comparison. So the most most important news for BFA is that satisfying style is once again largely in place, which means in terms of just how enjoyable it is to play, Discipline has every other healing class beaten easier than an ambient nightcap gets you fired from your job. This new iteration of the spec though smooths out Disc's throughput and probably makes it just a little bit easier to get to grips with too by bringing a more traditional Discipline tool back into the mix, a tool that should make your healing experience altogether more... <laughs> absorbing. Power Word Shield has had a big power nerf and been taken off cooldown for BFA, which means this now replaces the discarded plea as your standard method of applying individual atonements. With cooldowns that beef up that absorption and new talent Luminous Barrier shielding the whole raid every three minutes, which looks really cool. Not that that matters in the slightest. I mean, you're not going to take a talent just because it looks cool, are you? Even though it does look really cool. But I want you to know that's not why I take it. It's just a coincidence. Have you seen it though? Because honestly, it does look really cool. But that doesn't matter why are you even talking about it? And here's the main takeaway with all of this spammable bubble action. Whereas it doesn't diminish the importance or frequency of the atonement DPS dance, it does make it a bit easier and more forgiving. Which means that fear factor that stopped people trying their hands at the most fun spec in the game in Legion should be a little bit less this time out. And I wouldn't be surprised if we see Discipline becoming one of the most commonly played healing specs in any circumstance. Because honestly, why wouldn't you? Discipline can do brilliant throughput in raids and Mythic Plus, has one of the best tank cooldowns in Pain Suppression, as well as all that great priest utility like Leap of Faith, Master Spell, and underrated most helpful and least used dungeon ability, Dispel Magic. Yeah, I know, I know, you never use it, but honestly, you really should. In my opinion, Discipline Priest is a triumph of Blizzard class design, one that I don't think they get nearly enough credit for, and one that I am pleased to rank our funnest healing spec of Battle for Azeroth for the second expansion running. Give it a try, you should give it a try. As we look at the different specs and assess their strengths, it's important to remember one vital point. No healer has to carry a raid by themselves. What's important is that they have a clearly defined role and that they are good at the things they are supposed to be. Like, no one cares that Keanu Reeves is shit at Shakespeare. If he ever forgets how to play a cool bearded man of few words with a dark past, well, that's where we have a problem, you know? And so it is with the BFA Holy Paladin. Holy's niche is steady and reliable spot healing. They've got the beacons, they've got flash of light, they've got the new look aura of sacrifice sacrifice, which transfers 30% of the target's damage onto its own wide, plate-wearing shoulders. All of the tools to make them a tank's best friend in a raid environment and guarantee themselves a spot. Are you ever going to not want to take a Holy Paladin raiding? Especially at the beginning of the expansion, when you just know your tanks are going to get kicked around that little bit harder than usual. And of course, this means that Holy Pally is a standout choice for Mythic Plus too, where their strong individual heals and cooldowns can really shine. And you know what else is really useful in a dungeon? Sweet, sweet utility 
fertility and survivability, which paladins just so happen to have more of than just about anyone else. Blessing of freedom, bubbles, all that stuff that makes paladins a handy sort to have around. I also really like how Holy Paladin can gently encourage you to get in there and prove that weapon isn't just for show. Especially new talent Avenging Crusader, which gives 20 seconds of some pretty good DPS, big heals, and the satisfaction of being a true Reinhardt melee healer. And again, will be really handy in those small dungeon groups. As you might expect with all this great single target healing, Holy Paladin feels a bit under-equipped for sustained raid-wide throughput outside of its big cooldowns, but like I say, that's not really its job. You don't judge toilet paper by how nice it smells, and yes, that's the least glamorous metaphor I've ever made, but I stand by it. I like the Holy Paladin. It feels different from other healers in Battle for Azeroth. Heavier, slower, and with plenty of good tools. And so, Restoration Shaman. And if Paladin's all about the tank healing, then it won't be a... <laughs> shock for you to learn Resto couldn't give two shits about any of that, or actually doesn't give a single shit because Shaman is the only spec in the entire healing roster that has no external tank cooldown at all. Not a sausage. Which isn't ideal, obviously, but won't concern anyone too much because Resto Shaman have got their own thing going on. Namely, big, important raid cooldowns and a speciality in healing groups of players stacked together. Basically, if a fight requires your team to be grouped up in one place, then there is no one better to keep them alive because that's where Resto really comes into its <laughs> element. Healing Rain is as effective as ever, but Downpour is new, looks suspiciously like Legion's artifact trait, and Wellspring is technically a skill shot, which doubles down on Resto's need for the group to just, please guys, please just stay together, okay? All of this makes for a more reactive and flexible playstyle than you'll find in most other healers, and Resto feels a bit more nimble than it did in Legion as a result. And you know what? Even if you're in a fight that requires the group to spread themselves more thinly than a Doom plotline, then it's not like Resto will ever be used useless because they also come fully loaded with some of the biggest and most desirable raid cooldowns around. Healing Tide Totem is just pure brute force dirty throughput, and Spirit Link alone is unique and important enough to almost guarantee a spot for Resto on any raid team, but especially progression raiding, where Resto's mastery means their healing is actually better in the hardest content, making the Resto Shaman the big game players of Battle for Azeroth. There was a pretty glorious moment back there in the beta where Mistweaver found their numbers completely overtuned to the extent that no other class could come anywhere near them for sheer throughput power, which is why you may have already heard that Mistweaver is the strongest healer in Battle for Azeroth, and why you've maybe already re-rolled Mistweaver and told your guild that's what you'll be playing. And if that's the case, uh, well, congratulations on the new spec, but also, I've got good news and bad news. The bad news is that since the initial excitement, Mistweaver has already had that initial nerf which was about as unexpected as Neymar falling over, and that they are more than likely going to be getting further number tweaks before BFA goes live. And let's be honest, those tweaks aren't going to make them stronger, are they? But the good news is that if you did re-roll to Mistweaver, then you are still in for a treat, because this is a really smooth, rewarding spec, with some genuinely interesting changes from Legion. My favourite of which is definitely new talent Upwelling, which allows still coolest looking healing spell in the game, Essence Font, to be channeled for longer relative to how long it's been off cooldown. Don't touch that spell for 18 seconds and you double the power of your best raid wide healing spell. And even if you don't have a chance to build up those stacks, then you can still enjoy an extra 4 second duration on the resulting hot on each target. This is an absolutely huge turbo boost to an already great ability and means Mistweavers are capable of putting out some really quite considerable raid healing. Oh yeah, and of course you can move throughout that channel because of course you can, because Monk is also probably the most mobile class in the game. Only Shaman comes close for healers, but even then, they are going to be left eating your Chi Torpedo dust. Eat my Chi Torpedo dust, Cloudboy. There is a question over Monk's big raid cooldowns, because it's really only got one if you don't count Chi G, which you probably shouldn't, and that one is Revival, which granted is the most excellently fun big heal snipe troll ability in the game, designed specifically to piss off Holy Paladins, and as such is obviously brilliant, but it's kind of mid-tier in terms of actual usefulness. One thing I do like about Monk though is how adaptable their talent tree is. You can talent into decent builds for tank watching, dungeon fun, or why not go on you only live once full on fist weaving. It might even kind of be an actual thing this expansion, why not? Mistweaver just feels like a spec that you have complete control over, both in the style you choose to play and in how that gameplay then actually works. Whether it ends up being a must have in raids is going to depend on how those nerfs work out, but even if it just rules Mistweaver out for some cutting edge stuff, that shouldn't really detract from how enjoyable this spec is. 
there's one image I always have in my mind when I think about Holy Priest. It's an image I've used on this channel talking about it before, but I'm going to use it again. For me, Holy Priest is Mario. Specifically, Mario in Mario Kart. Holy is Ryu in Street Fighter 2. Holy is Soldier 76 in Overwatch. For me, Holy Priest is the baseline healer in World of Warcraft. The jack of all trades. The guy that has the most traditional and expected toolkit and gameplay. For me, more than any other class in the game, Holy Priest is the healer. That was true for Legion, and it's especially true in Battle for Azeroth, except to be honest, it's probably in a much better spot this time round. It's got a beautifully simple style of play. Use small single target or AoE heals to reduce the cooldowns on your bigger single target or AoE heals, and be ready to drop a single target or AoE cooldown when you need to. It's elegant, it makes sense, and it works. In Battle for Azeroth, it's a pretty straightforward job to put out some very strong throughput as Holy, thanks to its direct and powerful abilities, but also because of how mana efficient spells like Binding Heal are, and, and holy shit, Holy Priest, check out Holy Word Salvation applying hots to the whole raid with all its excellent synergy like it's no big thing. That's actually really awesome. And mana efficiency is a genuine selling point for a healer in the early days of progression raiding. Even if a few top players have been telling me that they're not quite sure Holy has the edge for the absolute highest level content, they've not got great survivability and their movement is as bad as usual. Oh, and actually, you know I said Resto Shaman were the only class without a real tank external? Well, Holy Priest does have one, but only just. Guardian Spirit is great, but only in quite specific situations. Like a rectal probe, it's not really the kind of thing you want to be using all the time. I mean, you could, but it won't do you much good. What would be really nice, Blizz, and you know, this isn't a request, just a suggestion, but also kind of a request too. What would be really nice would be a talent that let us cast Divine Him while moving around. Because at the moment, Holy Priest has the standing still hoping nothing terrible happens to you during the channel cooldown. We're that guy, and no one wants to be that guy. I really hope Holy Priest does turn out to be viable though, because the playstyle totally deserves it. It's a really tight, well put together design and a worthy foil to the Discipline Priest at the other end of the gameplay spectrum. I said that Mistweaver was the most mobile healer, and in terms of getting from A to B, they are. But when it comes to moving around whilst doing all your mad healing skills, Restoration Druid is your tree. Druid is still the archetypal heal over time spec, applying regrowth, rejuves, wild growths, and you know, all the other ones. Basically, Resto sees more growth than stocks in Russian bot software. And the thing is, that's a style that is always going to be incredibly effective in dungeons and in raids. It also means you're never gonna have any mana either, to be honest, but you know, it swings and roundabouts. Resto has the talents for single target or raid wide healing, but with germination and flourish on the same talent row, it might have to be a choice between one or the other at any given time. And to be honest, most of the time you're going to want to focus on your greatest strength, which is big, fat, sustained raid wide god mode. Because that's what you're used to after all. Flourish has been buffed to make up for the lack of artifact ability in BFA, and with rejuvenation's reduced duration, your healing is a lot less smooth than it was before, with those multiple rejuve, wild growth, and flourish windows becoming ever more impactful. Yeah, I know, remember those mana problems I just mentioned? I wasn't joking. The biggest changes for Restoration Druids, though, come in the form of their dungeon toolkit. You are going to notice not being able to take Flourish and Germination at the same time in smaller groups, as well as the missing Living Seed. Oh, and of course, no artifact means trees join Holy Priests in the standing, very still, maybe they won't see us raid cooldown club. But, you know, we knew that was coming. And to be fair, all of this is nitpicking, because Resto was a beast in dungeons in Legion, and these changes are more just an inconvenience than anything else. The tree isn't getting getting chopped down or anything, a small dog just did a small wee up against it, that's all. If you enjoy Druid for the way it played in Legion, then you are still going to enjoy it just as much in BFA. If you enjoy Druid because you love that sweet, sweet view from the top of the meters though, well, you might enjoy it just a little bit less, but only just. And there we have it, Internet, our roundup of the healing classes going into Battle for Azeroth. But what do you think? Which class gets your seal of approval? What change is making you quit the game in disgust? And why am I totally wrong about everything I've said? Let us know in the comments below. And thanks for joining us today. If you enjoyed this video, don't thank us, thank our patrons who give their actual real life money to make these videos happen. And especially right now, this week has been insane getting ready for the wedding on Sunday and we couldn't have done it without your help. And hopefully the range DPS video will be here next week when things have calmed down a little bit. If you didn't like it, downvote the shit out of it. Remember, my name is Selwen. No, my name is Taliesin from me and Evertel. Until next time, cheerio.